The following is a special live presentation of Retro Sports Network, home of the champions of the past, present, and or future. And sometime within the next seven or eight days, we will do just that. We are about to crown a champion. Hello, everybody. My name is Ron Juckett. Welcome to the program for this fourth day of October 20 the 22th. And this is the 1985 World Series. And if you were with us for the League Championship Series, we probably had a, a, a postseason run that will be talked about for ages if it was real life. The St. Louis Cardinals, down to their last six outs, get to Tom Deaton fewer on the three-run homer by Andy Van Slyke, and then an insurance home run by Terry Pendleton, and the Cardinals outlast the Dodgers in seven games. They will go with John Tudor in game one, so the Blue Jays will find themselves in the same situation the Dodgers were a few days ago. If they're going to win the World Series, they have to get past the house of Tudor. Now, a couple rule changes here before we start talking about the Blue Jays in this series. There is no DH. Games 1 and 2 are in Toronto, but there is no DH. This will be the last time ever that an American League park will host a game without a designated hitter, or at least scheduled-wise, that is, because by 1986, the Red Sox were using a DH at Fenway for the three games at Fenway, while... Clemens and Hurst had to hit at Chase Stadium against the Mets. Oh, yeah. Oh, by the way, the Blue Jays are here. <laughs> the Toronto Blue Jays, who steamroll for, through the first three games of the 1985 American League Championship Series, then were stymied for three against the California Angels. But Dave Steeb and Tom Hankey threw a five-hitter or a four-hit shutout, and the Blue Jays are here. And Buffy St. Marie is going to sing the Canadian National Anthem. They just brought someone up from Buffalo to sing the Stars and Star Spangled Banner. So, yes, so Buffy St. Marie in front of a Canadian audience of 20 million will sing O Canada. Well, she's singing it as we're going here. As the Blue Jays get set to host the first ever World Series game outside of the United States. There's no DH for, as we said in here, and of course, John Tudor is a lefty. So, some of the Blue Jays' advantage that they had in the Kansas City series with all the right-handed hitters and the DH just aren't here. Cecil Fielder, as a matter of fact, gets the call as the D, uh, as the first baseman here in Game 1. And we'll get to the rest of the lineup changes there. By the way, Dave Steve's pitch count tonight, potentially 150. So how are Tudor and Steve going in this one? Well... We finished up the World Series technically on a Friday. And so you give them, I was giving them a couple days to do that rest. So the World Series would have started on Sunday the 20th. But game two would have been against Monday Night Football on ABC. Considering that ABC would have televised this World Series. Guess what? Everyone got a day of rest. So it's a Tuesday. Technically it's a Tuesday start for this series. October 22nd, it's a night game. There is a day game scheduled in the series. Not that it really matters because we're with you tomorrow at noon Eastern. But game number four on Saturday in the series will be a day game. Can't miss the Golden Girls or anything like that. So that's that for that. It is the Toronto Blue Jays and St. Louis Cardinals playing for a world championship in front of God, Country, and Coca-Cola. Let's light this candle. Now. As Retro Sports Network. Proudly presents. The 1985 World Series. Tonight. Game one, live from Exhibition Stadium in Toronto, Ontario. It's the American League champion Toronto Blue Jays against the National League champion St. Louis Cardinals. And tonight's game is brought to you by DigitalDice.com, the best darn podcast on the web. 
for your sports simulation and replay needs. Find us today on Spotify, Spreaker, iTunes, or wherever else. Fine podcasts are listed. So it is, as we said, Dave Steep who's getting the call on this one. Steve pitched three times in the American League Championship Series. Let's first tell you what he did on the replay. 28 years old, fastball at 90 and a ground ball pitcher. He went 22 and 8 on the replay with an earned run average of 264 to get him the American League Cy Young Award. He last pitched five days ago against the Angels. So in that ALCS, 22 and a third innings, 12 hits, six runs all earned. He walked 13, and that's just not going to work against the Cardinals and all that speed. While striking out 19, he won the ALCS MVP, going 2-1 and one with a 2-4-2. Two, two. ERA, how you doing, Todd B? Take off, you hoser. Here's how the Cardinals are going to line up. You don't have a horse in this race, but you got a few goats. It'll be Vince Coleman leading off. There is no change in the Cardinal lineup from Game 7. Absolutely done. Willie McGee in center will bat second. Tommy Herr at second will go third. Jack Clark cleans up at first base. Tom Needenfewer is drinking buddy. Andy Van Slyke is in right. He'll bat fifth. Terry Pendleton at third will bat sixth. Ozzie Smith at short will bat seventh. Daryl Porter behind the plate will bat eighth. And he is somewhat familiar with this stadium because of his days with the Kansas City Royals. And John Tudor, who was named, by the way, the National League MVP along with the Cy Young Award winner and the NLCS MVP, will bat ninth on the mound. For Toronto, defensively, NBC called and wants their 1985 font back. I couldn't find what ABC used. <laughs> no, NBC gave it up its mind. George Bell is a 5 and a 5 in left as we set the J defense for you. Lloyd Mosby, a 5 and a 4 in center. Jesse Barfield, an 8 and a 10 in right. Garth Thorg is a 3 at third. Tony Fernandez, an 8 at short. Damaso Garcia, a 4 at second. Cecil Fielder gets the call tonight. Willie Upshaw and Fielder platoon down the stretch. And, of course, it's Tudor. So Fielder will be sacrificed tonight at first base. He's a five. Ernie Witt, a six and a three behind the plate. And Steve is a seven on the mound with a nine, four, six fielding percentage. I'm running the Blue Jays in Toronto and the Cardinals in, when they're in St. Louis. Vince Coleman had a terrible NLCS at 118, 4 for 34, and 2 RBI. But he has speed, and if he can get on, he is dangerous. And game one starts with a fly ball, shallow right. Barfield coming in, one out. So here is Willie McGee. Willie had a fantastic NLCS, 11 for 30, 367. A home run and five RBI. Steve winds and deals, and he bunts. Witt picks it up, throws to Garcia covering, and McGee is out. Two away for Tommy Herr, who went nine for 27 in the NLCS. That's 333. He had three RBI. So Steve. 58 degree night here in Toronto. Clear skies, winds left to right at 5. And so we're starting this World Series on a Tuesday because we don't want to miss Monday Night Football or anything like that. So the series will end before Halloween, even if it goes before the distance. Pitch to her. Tommy hits a ground ball to fielder. Cecil makes the play, and that will retire the side. 
Cardinals go in order in the top of the first. John Tudor steps on the mound to take his warm-up tosses. Bottom one, no score. And so here is how the Blue Jays will line up. This lineup has changed a bit with no DH and with the lefty Tudor on the mound. It'll be Damaso Garcia leading off at second base. Lloyd Mosby is in center. He'll bat second. George Bell is in left. He'll bat third. Jesse Barfield cleans up. He did not have a good series against the Angels, but you certainly don't want to put the rookie Cecil Fielder in that position. He only had 80-some-odd at-bats in the regular season, so you don't want to do that. I really had no idea what to do with Tony Fernandez. He is the perfect nine-hitter on this team as a DH, but he hit well, and you're certainly not going to put Fernandez up right in front of Steve, so he is going to bat fifth in this World Series, at least in game one and play short. Garth Org at third will, be, will bat sixth. Cecil Fielder will bat seventh and play first. Ernie went behind the plate. He really is their only option. Him and Mosby are the only two lefties in the lineup. And Dave Steve, the American League Cy Young Award winner on the mound. John Tudor, 3-0 and in the NLCS with an earned run average of 219. En route to winning not only the Sean Young Award of the National League, but the MVP, he went 28-5 with 11 shutouts and an earned run average of 176. If you want to quibble a bit, oh, by the way, Tudor, 31 years old, fastball at 85 and a ground ball plus pitcher. Mike Schmidt was the best offensive player in the National League, but the Phillies would have finished in last place without Mike Schmidt. John Tudor just kind of got the, if you believe in the person that helped you get in the playoffs as to get St. Louis where they are, and the Red Sox gave up on him. What is a lefty at Fenway? Then Tudor's your guy. In the NLCS, 3-0, 24 and two-thirds, 17 hits, Six runs all earned, a home run, nine walks, and 12 strikeouts. He is on three days rest. He threw 121 pitches in game seven. He gave up, as we said, six earned runs. He'll be fine. Defensively for the Cardinals, Coleman a five and an eight in left. McGee an eight and a seven in center. Van Slyke a four and a nine in right. Pendleton is a 9 at 3rd, Ozzie Smith a 9 at short, Tommy Herr a 5 at 2nd, Jack Clark a 6 at 1st, Daryl Porter a 5 and a 4 behind the plate, Tudor a 7 on the mound with a 9.55 fielding percentage. And the Cardinals are not bothered by the carpet at all here at Exhibition Stadium. Garcia against the Angels, 10 for 30 with 4 RBI. Tudor starts the World Series. A ground ball to Ozzie on the dirt. Throws to first. One out. So here's Mosby again. Really no one else to play in center field. Lloyd had a fantastic series against the Angels. Hitting 393. 11 for 28. Three doubles and five RBI. Tudor winds and deals, and Mosby draws the walk. Not a threat to steal. A 3-1 changeup missed down and outside. And here is George Bell. 296, two homers, and 10 RBI for the Jays in the ALCS. George Brett, by the way, is going to be the American League MVP. Bell was a, had a great year, but Brett was just a, that a little bit better. Pitched or throw to first. Mosby is back. How you doing, Matt? David Junior four hundred, by the way, our newest follower, and Orco Quad three 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 three. 
Gives us 245. Throw to Bell, and he strikes out. Tudor got him on an 0-2 fastball on the inside part of the plate. So the Blue Jays need something from Jesse Barfield. Jesse did not hit well against the Angels. 148, 4 for 27 in an RBI. Two out, throw to first. Mosby back. Again, Toronto is in the same position that the Dodgers were in the NLCS. You gotta beat the House of Tudor to go to the to win the World Series. And with the Monday night football extra day off, instead of being able to go just three and seven, both Steve and Tudor can go one, four, and seven. Pitch to Barfield. There's a ground ball to third. Pendleton goes across the way to Clark. And that will retire the side. So the Blue Jays draw a walk and leave a runner on. After one in game one, no score. So here is Clark. Jack had the best batting average of any St. Louis Cardinal. 407. Which is amazing for a guy that doesn't have any speed in this lineup. He did hit two homers and drive in seven. Steve winds and deals, and Clark has one into right center. Barfield cuts it off and will look Clark back to first. So that's the first base hit of the World Series. And then it'll bring up Andy Van Slyke. Andy will probably get most of the starts, except for when Jimmy Key goes for the Jays, and I'm expecting that to be game three in St. Louis. And... So Van Slyke, two for 15 on the NLCS. Two homers and four RBI, and none bigger than the eighth inning of Game 7. Pitch to Thumper. There's a ground ball to first. Fielder might get two out of this. Fernandez for one. No throw to first. And so Van Slyke's on. So one out for Pendleton. Terry, 208 in the NLCS. A homer and two RBI. Steve throws to first, and Van Slyke is back. If you're wondering about Witt's arm, he did throw out four of six would-be base dealers in the ALCS. His arm is only a three, however. So keep that in mind as we go through the series. One of the things that Mike Sosha did so well against the Cardinals was he threw out a lot of base runners. Witt did the same with the Angels. Vance Lake stays. Pendleton. Well, Vance Lake wanted to go. So Andy couldn't get a good jump and it's ball one. Toronto pitches out. Witt throws down to Fernandez. Van Slyke has it stolen. So that's what speed can do for you. Speed kills. And it's a two-ball count to Pendleton. Dave goes to the plate. Ground ball to third. Org over to fielder. For the out, Vance Light will stay put. Two out for Ozzie Smith. Ozzie. 10 for 26 in the NLCS, 385, a triple, and two RBI. So we said 58 degrees here, so pitchers cannot blow on their hands. Steve's pitch, and Ozzie sends this one in the left, opposite way, Bell coming in, and that will retire the side. Cardinals get a hit and leave them on. No runs, a hit, no errors. Bottom of the second here in Toronto, no score. So Tony Fernandez, again, you're just kind of making a guess here on what to do with him. He, for at least tonight, will bat fifth. Against the Angels, 320, 8 for 25, and 2 RBI. He scored five times in that series. Tudor starts the second, and Fernandez draws the walk. So a 3 0 fastball, Miss Low. And that's the second walk of the ninth for Tudor. So here's Ord. 
Barth against the Angels came in for the slumping Rance Mullinix. Four for 13, 308, a home run, and two RBI. Fernandez stays put, pitch to Orr, ground ball right to Tudor. John can't make a play on it, and it's first and second and nobody out. For Cecil Fielder. Cecil played game five of the ALCS when John Candelaria pitched for the Angels and went 0 for 4 with two strikeouts. On the real season, he hit 311 with four homers and 16 RBI. On the replay, he hit 253, two homers and five RBI. So Fernandez on second, Org on first. Toronto trying to get some cooking here in game one. Tudor from the set works. There's a fly ball, shallow right field. Van Slyke rides the Schwinn, makes the catch, one out. Fernandez tags, and with Van Slyke's arm, he's not going anywhere. So one out for Ernie Witt. Ernie at 192 in the ALCS, but he had two homers in the first two games. He drove in three overall. Pitch to Witt. Struck him out. And with two out, here comes the Achilles heel for the Toronto Blue Jays in this World Series. Dave Steeb. The outcome box says he has a batting average of 120 here. And a 35% chance of striking out. So first and second, two out. And what do you tell Steve here? Just don't get hurt. Tudor delivers. Fly ball left field. At least he makes contact. Coleman is there. And that will retire the side. Jays put on two and cannot score. No runs, no hits, and one error. We go to the third in game one. No score. So Porter, Tudor, and Coleman to face Steve in the third. You guys are quiet tonight. Porter and Nieto split time for the Cardinals in the NLCS. Daryl four for 12 with a double and an RBI. Again, Porter should get the bulk of the catching with the Blue Jays only having the one left-handed starter. Pitch to Porter. Ball four. You're watching Monday Night Football. <laughs> no, this would have been the Tuesday game. That's why we got the extra day. So, so here's Tudor. John went two for 11 in the playoffs with a triple. So sacrifice situation. Oregon, Garcia, uh, Oregon fielder come in. Steve from the wind. Tudor bunts it. Witt will go to second. And that is an error. It goes into center field. So Witt, just a bit of energy on that throw. It was muffed. Garcia just couldn't get there. Knocked it down. Porter wasn't expecting to be safe. And he didn't move on to third. How you doing, John? So first and second, nobody out. And the first error belongs to Ernie Witt. Vince Coleman is 0 for 1. Steve is opening 9, 36 pitches, 2 innings, a hit and a walk. No score, top the third. So these teams had three days off after the end of the NLCS. So Steve on full rest, Tudor on three days rest. Coleman. Little chopper down to first. Fielder goes to Fernandez for one. They get Tudor. They're not even going to throw for Coleman. Well, they do, but Vince beat it out. John says this one's going seven. So first and third, one out for McGee, who's 0 for 1. Any other predictions from the peanut gallery? Throw to first. And Coleman is, Coleman's back. Pitch out, runner goes. 
the throw down of Fernandez is got him. They got him. So Coleman is thrown out trying to steal. So Witt, again, cards and six is what Todd B says. I, I, I would agree with that, Todd. I think Toronto splits here. But Coleman, man, got the reprieve from the governor playing the World Series and oof. So two out and a one ball count to McGee who's 0 for 1. Steve deals. McGee chops it to third. Org across the way. And St. Louis is going to get nothing out of it. So Captain Ahab pumps his fist and goes back to the dugout. No runs, no hits, no errors. They leave on a runner after two and a half. St. Louis nothing, Toronto nothing. So here's Tudor to face Garcia. Damaso 0 for 1. Tudor, 41 pitches for his opening nine. Two innings, two walks, and two strikeouts. Garcia, ground ball to Clark. Jack picks it up, one out. The Goats, by the way, are here. John says teams are evenly matched. Similar bullpen, solid one and two starters. D difference could be Danny Cox. The good news for Danny is that he, he went game one of the real series. He will go game three in St. Louis. So whether home cooking makes a difference or not, because it will be Andahar and Alexander tomorrow at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific in game two. Mosby walked his first time up. Tudor's pitch. Struck him out. He got him on an 0-2 fastball on the black. Both teams have good young closers who didn't get a lot of work in the regular season. Todd Worrell for the Cardinals and Tom Henke for the Blue Jays. And just a note, we're going to use Henke as the primary guy out of the pen. You're in the World Series. Your job is to win. Here's Bell. George is 0 for 1. He struck out his first time up. Tudor from the wind. There's a base hit into right center field. Van Slyke will pick it up. And that is the first hit for the Jays. Comes with two out in the third. So here's Barfield. He's 0 for 1. Struck him out. Tudor got him to swing and miss. And that will retire the side. No runs, one hit, no errors. The Jays have left on four. So Tudor's been a weeble wobble. He's weebled and wobbled, but hasn't fallen down. We go to the fourth, no score. So her, Clark, and Van Slyke. I would give a slight edge to the Cardinal pen. Acker and Caudell are kind of wild cards. They didn't pitch that much in the ALCS. Pitch to her. Tommy hits a ground ball to Fernandez. Tony throws to first for the out. Toronto will get an upgrade at first base when they get Upshaw back. But no Jeff Burrows, no Al Oliver, except for off the bench. Here's Clark as the one hit for the Cardinals. He singled in the second. Long drive left field. Bell in the corner. Has it for the out. Two away. This was before Dwayne Ward. Yep, Dwayne Ward would have been 87 and 89, I think. Here's Van Slyke. He stole the base, reached on an error. Steve delivers, and Thumper thumps this one into right center, and Barfield will cut it off for a single. So again, that cardinal speed may or may not show itself. Two out for Pendleton is 0 for 1. You really would expect this one to be the pitcher's duel anyway. 
the Blue Jays, if they have a question mark in the rotation, it would be Jim Clancy, and he probably would go game six. And the problem with Clancy is his pitch count just isn't going to be all that high. 87 is a good year, and if you're a Blue Jay fan, so you wouldn't do, that would be one you would not want to do is as played, Todd, because you lose Fernandez out last week of the season. Pitch to Pendleton. Terry strikes out. That's the first from Steve, and that will retire the side. No runs, one hit, no errors. We go to the bottom of the fourth here in Toronto, no score. So Fernandez walked his first time up, Oregon fielder. So as we said, who else but Buffy St. Marie would sing O Canada before game one. And whoever sings the anthem at Maple Leaf Gardens got to do the Star Spangled Banner tonight. And drawing a blank, who was the first manager of the Jays? Fernandez walked his first time up. Tudor starts the fourth. Ball four. So Fernandez has reached both times. So here is Orr. Garth is 0 for 1. Wasn't Preston Gomez. Oh, Corey Hart could be for tomorrow night. Pitch to Garth. There's a ground ball to her. Smith for one. And Org is safe at first. The throw is late. Brian Adams, of course. A duet. Well, you know, you got two anthems to sing. So here's Cecil Fielder. He's 0 for 1. So good thinking with that with uh, Corey Hart and Brian Adams. There's, there's some little girl from Quebec that I hear can sing really well. I'm not sure how well, though, having O Canada and completely in French would go, but little Celine Dion is being forced to watch game one on CTV tonight, and she says, I can do that. Here's Cecil. He's 0 for 1. Runner on first is Ord. Tudor throws, and Garth isn't going anywhere. One out here in the fourth. Pitch to Cecil. Ground ball foul, third base side. And the count goes to 0-2. For St. Louis, obviously Lou Rawls. Survivor. Or no, Glass Tiger, right? Could do that. It'd be too early for the bare naked ladies. In Toronto. Pitch to Fielder. Cecil strikes out. That's five now from Tudor. An 0-2 change on the inside corner. So two out for Witt. Thank gr That's right. I forgot he was Canadian. Thank goodness it's too early for Justin Bieber. He's just a stain on a carpet someplace. Witt struck out his first time up. And that's just the type of thing you hear about on a Fortnite stream. Pitch to Ernie. Got him. That's six for Tudor. Boys, he kind of settled down in. No runs, no hits, and no errors. After four, no score. We've lost people talking about Justin Bieber. So it'll be Ozzie Smith, Daryl Porter, and John Tudor to face Steve here in the fifth. Steve winds and deals, and there's a fly ball center field. Mosby coming in. One out for Daryl Porter, who walked his first time up. Pitch from Steve. Line drive right field. That's extra bases. Barfield's got to go fish it out. Porter's going to have two at a minimum. And the throw is going to go in the second. Porter, however, will beat the slide. And that's a second postseason double. And now you're going to put Tudor in a position where he can bunt him over the third. 
So Fielder and Org play for the bunt. Tudor reached on the bunt his first time up. He strikes out. So on the first two, he squared and couldn't do it, and then he just kind of checked the swing on the one-two curveball for strike three. So there's two out. Vince Coleman is 0 for 2. Steve opening 18, 4 and 2 thirds, 71 pitches, 3 hits, a walk, and 2 strikeouts. That's true. Rush, the late Neil Pert on the drums, and Loverboy. Again, we got Anthem of Palooza with a 2. So 2 out. Pitch to Coleman. Porter goes. Ground ball to go to Steve who throws to Fielder and that will retire the side. So Steve was leaning towards first, scooped it up, underhanded it to the first baseman, and that'll do it. You won a pitcher's duel in game one. By God, you got it. Halfway home in game one, no score. Gordon Lightfoot. Yep, that's true. The McKenzie brothers. Bobby Bittman, by the way, wanted to do a pregame set, but the Blue Jays told him no. Well, we if you join us late, you haven't missed any offense. There haven't been any runs. John Tudor coming off his game seven win over the Dodgers has one hit the Jays through four and struck out six. Dave Steeb, a three hitter for him, and he is fan two through five. In fact, Steve is going to have to swing here. He's 0 for 1. But old Buffy got game 1. Right? We just couldn't do that. Pitch to Steve. He draws the walk. Imagine that. You walk the pitcher. In a league that pitchers don't hit, you walk the pitcher. Good eye, Kubla Kai. So a full count fastball just low. So opening 18 for Tudor, 80 pitches, four innings, a hit. He now has walked four while striking out six. Garcia is 0 for 2. Steve has the jacket on. Pitchers now have been told they can blow into their hands. It is now 50 here in Toronto. Garcia, ground ball to Clark. Jack will take it to the bag himself. Steve was kind of hoping that they'd throw him out. So Steve on second is in scoring position. One out for Mosby. Lloyd has walked and struck out. And that's the kind of day it's been. So Tudor. Steve, by the way, has been given a four-run rating. Just putting it out there. Mosby strikes out. That's seven for Tudor. A one-two fastball swung on and missed. So two out for Bell. George has singled and struck out. The lone hit for the Jays. Yet they've left on five. And Steve, they're not going to really challenge on the as a base runner, is probably going to be number six. Tudor sets and deals. In the left center, McGee. That's well hit, but that's going to stay in the yard, and that will retire the side. No runs, no hits, and no errors. We go to the six in a scoreless game. So McGee, her, and Clark to face Steve. Willie chops this one to third. Garth Org 
Over to first. One out. So that brings up Tommy Herr. Tom is 0 for 2. In the mid-80s, this was not unusual for teams to really just kind of feel each other out in game one. I believe game one was 1-0 in 85. That's a hockey score. New Jersey Devils have got that neutral zone trap working tonight, eh? Pitch to her, and there's a line drive to Garcia. No score, no two out. Got me going there. So here's Clark. Jack is one of the three cardinal hits. He's one for two. Steve working quickly on this cold night. Struck him out. He gave him something off speed, and Clark wanted a fastball. No runs, no hits, no errors. We go to the bottom of the six here in game one. It's the Cardinals nothing, the Blue Jays nothing. So Barfield, Fernandez, and Org, the face tuner here in the sixth. Barfield is 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Hits to Jesse. Little chopper to third. Pendleton has to run in on it, but it will roll foul. And so the count is full, three balls and two strikes. I'm assuming that someone would tell me if um, Aaron Judge hit a 62nd tonight, right? As we're playing this on the next to last day of the regular season in 2022. Pitch to Barfield. There's a line drive right back to Tudor. And John has been signed to a contract by the Toronto Maple Leafs. After that catch, one out for Fernandez, who's walked twice. Tudor has walked four. Fernandez twice. Steve once. And Mosby as well. ESPN will probably have an hour show on it. When it happens. True. Matt played FIFA 23 all afternoon, so this score looks right to you. So Toronto FC, actually this is where Toronto FC plays in this on this lot. Pitch to Fernandez. Tony swings, ground ball to Ozzy, hard throw to first. For the out. Two out for Orr, Garth is 0 for 2. This one just kind of feels like the first couple rounds of a heavyweight championship fight, just trying to feel each other out. Tudor, by the way, right on 100 pitches. Org, right to Ozzy, and that will retire the side. No runs, no hits, and no errors. We go to the seventh here in Toronto. No score. So Van Slyke, Pendleton, and Smith to face Steve. Again, his pitch count is 150. The good news is he hasn't given up a run. The bad news is he's due to hit third and the seventh. Pitch to Van Slyke. Andy in the right field. Barfield coming in, and there is one out. So there's Pendleton. Terry 0 for 2 with a strikeout. So if you missed the award announcements, John Tudor, the National League MVP, because the Phillies still would have sucked if Mike Schmidt hadn't had a magnificent year. Judge Homer 23 minutes ago for number 62. How about that? Congratulations. Who gave up the meatball? And George Brett is the 85 American League Sim MVP. Pitch to Pendleton. There's a ground ball to third. Fielder has it for the out. So to tell you just how much I'm follow modern baseball, do they at least do it at Yankee Stadium or are they still on the road? So here's Ozzie Smith. Ozzie's old for two. Steve Wines and deals. Ozzie into shallow left center. Mosby riding hard. Makes the catch to retire the side. Stretch time in game one, no score.
So they're down in Arlington at Globe Life. Jesus Tinoco gave it up in the first. So good for Judge. Even as a Red Sox fan, you just got to tip your hat. And I can't wait for the Mets to sign him. Here's Cecil Fielder. He's 0 for 2 in the strikeout. So here we are in the late stages of game one. And we've never, we don't have a run on the board yet. Not touching that one with a 10-foot pole, Todd. But the answer is always to that question, John Lennon. Pitch to Fielder. Cecil swings, line drive to third, and Pendleton's there one out. So here's Ernie Witt. Ernie has struck out twice. The Blue Jays knew that they were going to be in a world of hurt to face Tudor. But Steve has been every bit the equal over the first seven innings. Pitch to Ernie. Ernie is in the fly, high fly ball right field. Van Slyke makes the catch. Two out. And Steve, of course, will bat here. He has walked and is 0 for 1. And to go back with the joke, I'm not going to completely read out on the air, Todd. Instant karma is going to get you. So, Tudor, two out here in the seventh. Working on a one hitter. Struck him out. That's eight for Tudor as Steve swung on and missed. We go to the eighth in game one. It's the Cardinals nothing, the Blue Jays nothing. Does MLB have any extra asterisks to hand out? Yeah, whoever wins this World Series will have an asterisk because it's a sim, not the real thing. Here's Daryl Porter. Daryl has doubled and walked. Steve has allowed three hits through seven. Tudor has just allowed the one hit, and that was to George Bell. Pitch to Porter. High fly ball, right field, one nothing St. Louis. Again, it's the power of St. Louis. Pitch, you didn't have that one in Vegas, did you? My goodness, he crushed that into right center. He just gave the Argos a point. That was an absolute no-doubter for Daryl Porter. And the Cardinals, what is it about them in the eighth inning? They lead 1-0. So the first batter Steve faces after his at-bat, homers. So here's Tudor. He has struck out. He's 0 for 1. Round ball to second. Garcia towards first. Throws him for the out. So here's Coleman. Steve, again, I don't know what more you can expect from Dave. Seven and a third is opening 27. Four hits. The home run to Porter. A walk and three strikeouts. Coleman is 0 for 3. No, it's because it was game 162. He does hold the record. Aaron Judge does hold the record. Technically, there is no, there was never an asterisk with Maris. Ford Frick tried to put one on, but there was such an outcry that although it took Maris the full 162 to beat Ruth, pitch to Coleman, popped up, Witt doffs the mask, Has it for the out. Two out for McGee, who's 0 for 3. Top of the lineup for the Jays in the 8th. Garcia, Mosby, and Bell. Steve winds and deals. McGee drags a bunt down and is going to beat it out. Or got there, but McGee... Well, now they'll throw. But McGee had it beat by a couple steps. So a two-out single for St. Louis. That's their fifth of the ballgame. One run, five hits, and an error for St. Louis. They've left on only four. Toronto has been held to one hit. No runs, a hit, and an error, and they have left on six. Tommy Hur is 0 for 3. Steve will throw to first, and McGee is back. 
There goes Willie, and Witt will throw down to Fernandez, and McGee has it stolen. So a one ball count to her, two out. And Tommy is 0 for 3. There goes McGee, a ground ball to Garcia, throws to first, and it goes 4-3 on the card. So, Daryl Porter hits a solo homer in the right center field, and that's the only run of the game so far. We go to the bottom of the eighth here in Toronto, one nothing, St. Louis. So, Tudor, 27 batters, 119 pitches, 7 innings, 1 hit. He has walked four and struck out eight. The Blue Jays have had nothing to look at. And Garcia is 0 for 3. Garcia up the middle for a base hit. So the Jays have the leadoff runner on here in the eighth. For Mosby, Lloyd is 0 for 2. He has walked and struck out twice. He's not going to bunt here. Throw to first. Garcia is back. Infield guards the lines. Pendleton and Clark. Hit and run is on. Mosby can't swing. The throw down to Ozzy and Garcia steals the bag. So although Mosby didn't make contact, Garcia stole the base off of Tudor. And so the tying run is on second and a one-two count to Mosby. Nobody out here in the eighth. It was, I was looking at the outcome box and it was down to 209. And Garcia, after the throw, his stolen base percentage jumped up to 65. And look, you got to take chances. Tudor's been dealing all night. There's a base hit into right field, and it's going to pay off. Van Slyke will pick it up. Garcia's going to round third and hold. So they don't want to run on Van Slyke's arm. And here's Bell, who was one for three. He has singled and struck out. It's a 1-0 St. Louis lead. Nobody out here in the eighth. And the Cardinals are playing in. We'll get to that in a second, Matt. So Tudor, 43 degrees. He's blowing in on his hand. It's not a windy night. Wind's blowing out the center at three. Porter and Tudor have a word. John sets and deals. Ground ball to Ozzy, and they're only going to get the runner at first. So Mosby goes to second. And let's see what they do with Barfield. So second and third, one out. So they're playing in again. What Babe Ruth did in 27 is still the most impressive, Matt says. Ruth hit more homers than any other team in the American League with a 60, and only three clubs in the National League hit more than he did. So in the 16 teams that consisted of Major League Baseball in 1927, Babe Ruth out hit 7 and 12. He out homered 12 teams. So second and third for Barfield, who now has a snowball's chance in heck here. Tudor deals. Barfield swings. That's in the center. McGee going back. Garcia's going to tag. McGee makes the catch. Garcia goes back to the bag, and we are tied at one. So that'll bring up Fernandez. Tony has walked twice and is 0 for 1.
And so Lange's gonna make the move. He's gonna go with Ricky Horton. So Horton, it's two innings in the NLCS. 26 years old, fastball at 90, ground ball put pitcher. Against the Dodgers. In game six, he threw two innings, 31 pitches, two hits, and two walks. So Fernandez, two walks and is 0 for 1. So at the moment, no decision for John Tudor. Horton deals. Fernandez into right field. Van Slyk had him played perfectly, and that's the inning. So the Blue Jays, with the gutsy hit and run call, manufacture a run. We go to the ninth in game one. 1-1 one, one to score. So Steve on 116 pitches to face Clark, Van Slyk, and Pendleton. Jack is one for three tonight. He has struck out once. And Cesar Cedeno is going to pinch hit. Cesar went 0 for 2 in the ALC, NLCS, so walking a strikeout. So Witt and Steve go through the signs. Dave wines and deals. Ground ball, base hit right side. So the go-ahead run is on for Van Slyke. Andy, one for three. He has singled and stolen the base. Throw to first. And Cedeno is back. <sighs> Nobody out. Top of the ninth. A 1-1 one -one tie. And the Jays will make the move. Gary Lavelle, who did not pitch in the ALCS, gets the call here. They're pretty much going to try and force the Cardinals to pinch hit. Lavelle on the replay, five and two, three saves, an earn run average of 344. 42 games. He's 36. Used to pitch for the Giants. Fastball tops out at 89. And is a ground ball plus pitcher. Van Slyke will be pinch hit for. It'll be Tito Landrum for the Cardinals. Went 3 for 12 in the NLCS with a home run. Again, throw to first, and Cedeno is back. So the pitch to Landrum. Struck him out. Gary got him on a 2-2 curve. So one out for Pendleton, who was 0 for 3 with a strikeout. So it's a bullpen game now. Lavelle throws to first, and Cedeno's back. There goes Cedeno, the throw down to Garcia, and Cesar is in there with a stolen base. Again, the Cardinals have speed to burn. Now, you really don't want to walk Pendleton here, because Ozzie Smith can hit. Pitch to Terry, struck him out, I think, and Pendleton says a few words to the home plate umpire, and the home plate umpire did the discretion being the better part of Valor and didn't say a word. So two out for Ozzie, who was 0 for 3, Org, Fielder, and Witt in the bottom of the ninth for Toronto. 
But Lavelle has to get through this. Pitch to Ozzie. There goes to Daniel. Ground ball to Garcia. Over to first. And we go to the bottom of the ninth in a 1 1 tie. So Org, Fielder, and Witt. And then the pinch hitter spot. Garth is 0 for 3 here in game one. Horton winds and deals. Ground ball, little ground ball to Ozzy. He's got to hurry over to first. Cedeno is there for the out. <coughs> so two changes defensively for St. Louis. Landrum is a four and a four and right. And Cedeno is a two at first. Here's Fielder. Cecil is 0 for 3 with a strikeout. But he has a 6% chance of sending everyone home happy here in about two seconds. So Horton trying to stay within himself. One out here in the ninth. Fielder, ground ball to her on the dirt. Tommy Pivots throws to first, two out. So these two teams will hook up at noon tomorrow. Ernie Witt, 0 for 3. And struck out twice. Cardinals and Dodgers play the next inning game. The Blue Jays and Angels did not. And we are one out of ways from some freebie baseball on a Tuesday night. Pitch to Witt. There's a ground ball left side over Smith. And that's a base hit. So the Jays have the winning run on with two out. Who can hit a lefty? We're going to go with Jeff Burrows. Burrows went one for three against the Angels. Upshot can hit lefties. Hmm. Horton trying to get out of this and force extra innings. Porter, who homered in the eighth, the first run of the series, pitcher spot in Coleman, should this go 10. Pitch to Burroughs, line drive left field, Coleman makes the catch. No, he doesn't! He doesn't! What happened? Coleman tried to make a diving stop, and he trapped the ball. Witt thought he had it. He did not, and so now it's second and third with two out. Coleman trying to tell the left field umpire he made the catch. But it's a trap. And Manny Lee's going to pinch run. So Lee on second. He is the only run that matters right now. Jeff Burroughs can just kind of sit down in that Adirondack chair. Garcia is one for four. A single, a run scored, and a stolen base. I think it's one of those you see... In the upper left, it gives me the chance if I want to dive for the ball to make the catch. And so I think that's what it was. And Coleman tried and could not make the sliding catch to send this game to extra innings. So let's see what happens now with Garcia. Lee, the winning run on second. Burrows on first. Horton deals. Ground ball to Cedeno, who's not a good fielder. But he'll take it to the bag, and we get free baseball tonight in Toronto. No runs, two hits, and no errors. We go to the 10th in a 1-1 tie. So Nicosia, the new catcher. And Caudill is the new pitcher. Bill. 
Went one inning in the ALCS, an inning in the third. And gave up a run. 29 years old, a fastball at 93, and a standard pitcher. He went early in game two, as a matter of fact, and gave up a garbage time run. So Porter, Zalapsky, Smurf, pitcher spot in Coleman, but Porter had the solo homer in the eighth. Pitch to Darrell. Here's a base hit in the right field. Barfield will pick it up. And there's an error. Who's it on? Inspector Clouseau. Fielder dove, but he's not a great fielder. His fielder. So throw to first and Porter is going to get pinch run for. Avanda Jesus will pinch run. And I can't imagine Horton's going to bat here. Mike Jorgensen. Went 0 for 3 and struck out twice. So if Cuffs can induce a ground ball, he can get two here. 1-1 one, one in, the, in the 10th inning. Daryl Porter, a solo shot in the 8th. And then the Jays scrambled off of John Tudor and manufactured a run, and that's why we're still playing. Pitch to Jorgensen. There's a bunt. Nicosia throws down to Garcia for the out, and De Jesus moves to second. So now you got to ask yourself, what do you do with Coleman, who can't even hit his weight? He's 0 for 4 tonight and 4 for 38 on the postseason. However, a single probably scores to Jesus. And if you walk in, then you face the red hot Willie McGee. Again, one for four tonight. But he won the National League batting title. They're going to pitch to Coleman. Gets away from Nicosia. And De Jesus goes to third. Nicosia on the pass ball. Remember, the Blue Jays tried to scramble to score the winning run in the ninth, and they couldn't. By the way, Mosby, extra innings, yep, Mosby, Bell, and Barfield for the Jays in the 10th. Infield playing in now. 3-0 the count to Coleman. And he finally gets a single. Laces that one in the center field. The Jesus will score, and the Cardinals go up 2-1. So here's McGee, he is one for four. Ernie Witt was replaced by Manny Lee because Witt was on second in the ninth and, and Lee would have scored on a single. And he's their only other catcher, yep. Throw to first, Coleman back, one out. Two to one, St. Louis. They pitch out. There goes Coleman to throw down to Fernandez. And Vince is gone. Nicosia throws out Vince Coleman. And so there's two out. Nobody on. For McGee, who is one for four. In the left, Bell in the corner. And somebody from London made that catch. So the count is one and one to McGee. Willie swings into right center, Mosby. So the Cardinals manufacture a run. And now Jeff Lottie is going to try to close this out. Lottie one and all with a save in the NLCS. He appeared in four games against the Dodgers. 29 years old, fastball 89 and a standard pitcher. 
Two and a third, three hits, a run. It was earned. He struck out two. He got the win. In game five. So Mosby, Bell, and Barfield here in the 10th. Lloyd has struck out twice and walked. He's one for three. Pitch to Mosby. Walked him. So here's Bell. He is the winning run. He is one for four. He has singled and struck out. Lottie throws to first. And Mosby's back and now won't steal. Pitch to Bell. Struck him out. So one out for Barfield, who was so overdue the library, went out of business. 0 for 3. He has struck out, but he drove in the tying run in the 8th. Throw to first. Mosby back. Now they're going to go for the straight steal. Nieto is a five and a seven. Throws down to her. Mosby has it swiped. So Nieto is the catcher for St. Louis. He's a five and a seven. So one out, and now the tying run is on second. The Jays have speed. An 0-1 count to Jesse Barfield. Tony Fernandez on deck. Barfield swings. Base hit. Left field. Mosby will round third. Coleman is going to pick it up. Mosby's going to hold. And it's first and third and one out. The Jays are using the cards playbook. So here's Fernandez, who is 0 for 2, but he's walked twice. And so the infield playing in. 2-1 St. Louis. Bottom of the 10th. The Jays had the tying run at third and the winning run on first. Pitch to Fernandez. There's a ground ball to Ozzy. He's only going to get the runner at first. Maybe no! No, he doesn't! And the game is tied. I'm not sure it gave me the option, Todd. Although Coleman has an eight arm. So the game is tied. An infield hit. Fernandez with his speed blazing down the line. And it's 2-2 two, two here in the 10th. So here's Org. Don Denkinger is in a locked box with Tom Needenfewer. So first and second, one out. And Org is 0 for 4. Struck him out. Got him on a 2 2 face fastball. So two out. For Willie Upshaw, and we'll have a pitching change. It's going to be Bill Campbell. So Campbell. Appeared three times in the NLCS. Third base coach Jimmy Williams was always way too conservative. Who is the first manager of the Jays? Campbell, 37, fastball, 85, and a ground ball pitcher. Last pitched in game four, I think. And their 5-3 win over the Dodgers. Three and two-thirds innings, five hits, two runs, both earned. He walked one and struck out two. Tonight's bullpen excursions. Oh, Roy Hartsfield. So he's the one that threw out the first pitch tonight. Tonight's bullpen excursions brought to you by Matchlight Charcoal. Yeah, Roy Hartsfield. So Barfield, the winning run. Upshaw against the Angels, 7 for 20. He hit 350. A home run in three RBI. And Al Oliver is going to be on deck. 
with the pitcher spot up. 2-2 two, two the score. Two out, bottom of the 10th, game one. Campbell deals. Upshaw hits a ground ball to her, and Tommy goes to second for the fours. And so the Cardinals score in the top of the 10th, and the Blue Jays respond in the bottom of the 10th. And so Cardell will not pitch the 11th. We go to the 11th, 2-2. Two, two. So switchy, righty, righty. You want Hanky now or you want Acker? You could go with Lamp too, but... I've already made the switch to put Upshaw in the game, so... Hanky or Acker? Give me a one-inning performance because the pitcher spot is due up. Her, Sedeno, and Landrum because Clark and Van Slyke are out of the game. I'm thinking Acker. Yeah. Acker, again, three games in the ALCS. 27 years old, ground ball plus plus, fastball pitcher in 90. Did not get a decision. Pitched in the two blowout wins in games one and four. And did not pitch well in game five. So two and two thirds for Jim against the Angels. Five hits, two runs, both earned, three walks and a strikeout. And should this game go 12, then you got a choice of Lamp or Hanky. Her is 0 for 4. Acker starts the 11th with a ground ball base hit. Mosby will pick it up. And the Cardinals have their ninth hit of the ball game. Here's Sedano, came in as a pinch hitter, singled and stole the base. Throw to first. And her... Actually, it's a bad throw, and it gets past Upshaw. So her will take second. You'll walk Sedano here to face Landrum. So the go-ahead run is on second. And there's a meeting now to see what you want to do with Sedano. I think you gotta set up the double play, don't you? Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna set up the double play. So first and second, nobody out for Landrum, who struck out his first time up. Double play does a lot for you right here. And Tom Lawless, who thinks it's 1987, goodness gracious, Buffy St. Marie, is going to pinch hit. Lawless struck out in his one appearance against the Dodgers. He's not going to bunt here. So first and second, nobody out, top of the 11th. Acker delivers. Lawless does what Toronto wanted. Org takes it to third himself, throws to first, and they got him. So a 5-5-3 five, five, double play. And so Sedano is down the go-ahead run on second, but two out for Pendleton. So it worked. The twists and turns in this one. Pendleton has struck out twice. He's 0 for 4 tonight. Two out in the 11th. Cedeno on second. There's a base hit in the right center field. Barfield has a cannon. 
Cedeno rounds third. Are they even going to give me the option? The throw to the plate is not in time. And Pendleton will take second. So for the second inning in a row, the Cardinals go up. This time it's 3-2. So here's Ozzy, 0 for 4. Acker deals. There goes Pendleton. Ground ball to first. Upshaw takes it. And that will retire the side. But the Blue Jays turn the double play. The Cardinals turn the run. One run, two hits an error. We go to the bottom of the 11th in game one. It's 3-2 St. Louis. And so Bill Campbell is going to face... Al Oliver. Oliver had three homers against the Angels, including the big blast in Game 7. Seven for 23 in the ALCS with three homers and six RBI. Campbell trying to lock this down in the 11th. Fly ball right field. Braun going back in the corner. Oh, one out. Steve is a four and an eight out there in right. Nicosia. Mullinix. And then someone that has never caught will have to catch. Rance, 3 for 15 in the ALCS with an RBI. One out. Base hit. Left center field. That should be extra bases. McGee throws it into third. Rance has a pinch hit double. And it's the top of the lineup. It's Garcia, 1 for 5. A run scored in a stolen base. This one has been all that in a bag of chips here in game one. Pitch to Garcia. Base hit right center field. Braun picks it up. Mullenix, what's he going to do? He's going to hold on a 39% chance. So first and third for Lloyd Mosby. Who is one for three. He has singled, stolen a base, struck out twice, and walked twice. So Garcia, the winning run, is on first. The tying run is on third. How about this for an opening act, huh? Cardinals are playing in. Pitch to Mosby. Little number down to Cedeno. And they'll go to Ozzy for the out there. So Mosby and Mullenix, two out. For Bell, who was one for five and has struck it out twice, and Campbell remains in a bit of a stew. So they're not out of the woods yet. Two out, bottom of the 11th, and a 3-2 thriller here in Toronto. And it's cold. It's now 38 degrees. It was 58 when this game started. So Bell is singled and struck out twice. He is one for five. Campbell throws to Mosby, and Lloyd isn't going to give him that. And we are down to the last chance saloon. A single, however, extends the ball game. Pitch to Bell. Ground ball to her. Tommy goes to first. The Cardinals win game one. Well, the peanut gallery will have what to say about how that end of that game was managed, but Toronto just did everything they could.
So three runs, ten hits, and an error for St. Louis. They left on seven. Two runs, nine hits, and two errors for Toronto, and they left on 13. By the way, Vince Coleman got thrown out trying to steal twice. The St. Louis Cardinals stole three bases. The Blue Jays stole two. It should be a very entertaining series. No, no, no real shame losing to Tudor. Although Bill Campbell got the win. Tudor seven and two thirds, three hits. A run it was earned. He walked four and struck out eight. Horton did his job. Lottie did not. Steve. Six inning, or eight innings, six hits. The home run to Porter in the eighth. Then Lavelle, Caudle, and Acker. So the pen again, fireworks all around. All right, game two tomorrow at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific. It'll be Joaquin Andahar and Doyle Alexander. And if it's anything like this, you're in for a classic. Have yourself a great night, everybody. So long.